Hello and welcome everyone to a Portal to Starcraft episode 2. Choosing a race, Terran, Protoss or Zerg. Before we get started, I'd like to give you all who watch these videos a massive thank you because episode 1 absolutely exploded. The response by you all was humbling and I immediately started writing episode 2 once I saw the potential of this series. Anyway, we are here today to be looking at how to choose a race in StarCraft based on specific traits each of them hold. Within StarCraft 2 you have three races to choose from, Terran, Protoss and Zerg. These all have different units, playstyles, mechanics and engagement patterns. A lot of players, especially in your lower brackets of competitive play, will often complain about balance between the races. However, 9 times out of 10, it is simply due to the fact they have not yet mastered the playstyle of the race in which they are playing. So my job for today's video is simple, to help the newer player choose and understand their race. So let's get started. The first race in which I will cover is Terran, the human race. Terran is the race where everything you've come to know in an RTS is expected. Units are all queued in their barracks, factories and starports as common to many RTS games. The big defining factor of Terran, especially in their macro however, is their use of scans, which are used to reveal a portion of the map for a period of time, making scouting extremely easy. The other being the Mule. This unit which is called from the stars from the command center for a period of time is a minor unit, which brings back minerals at a considerably faster rate compared to the everyday SCV, giving the Terran the potential to generate a larger income, especially in the early game when compared to the Zerg or Protoss. This is if the Mule production is executed regularly. Within the Terran tech tree you have two main paths to be taken. Those are Bio or Mech. Just between these two very generalized compositions, differing playstyles are present. Bio is based around small agile units which are very low in health. However, when upgrade pack a powerful punch when microed correctly. This usually encompasses marines, marauders and medevacs with widow mines sometimes mixed into it. The other being Mech, which is the exact opposite when it comes to playstyle. These units are expensive, slow, however hit hard when positioned correctly. Units often including tanks, hellions, thors and banshee. Generally speaking, Terran is the race which is known for the intense micro needed in order to win. However, when done correctly is extremely effective, giving Terran a rather high skill ceiling as the players who master these traits of this race are extremely hard to beat. Next we move on to Zerg. What else can I say about the Zerg other than fast? Zerg is known for being that race which requires a higher APM in order to macro and micro cohesively. If you have ever heard of the term Zerg Rush, then you already have an idea of how this race operates. Units are cheap, expendable, and you can get a lot of them in a very short amount of time. In the ways of macro, the Zerg are unique as their production isn't revolved around a structure, only capable of creating particular units. Instead, Zerg production is centered around hatcheries, buildings morphed from a drone which generate lava periodically. This lava production can also be enhanced with the use of queens, with their inject lava ability. As I was saying, instead of making many of the same building in order to produce units, Zerg needs to build one structure, all upgrades for it included, in order to morph those lava I mentioned into ferocious killing machines. As you can probably tell, once you have a bank of lava saved up, Zerg has the potential to create tens of units simultaneously, giving them the name Zerg Rush. Zerg also stray away from the normal in the way in which they generate map vision. Where Terrans need to scan or Protoss sends an observer across the map, Zerg generates Creep, a sticky, gooey substance which is placed by a queen and can then further be spread further and further along the map, also giving your Zerg units a hefty speed boost. If left alone, Creep will literally consume the whole map giving the Zerg player all the vision they need to see what the opponent is doing. This brings me on to my next point, Zerg engagement patterns. Where Terran and Protoss would want to generally engage in some sort of choke point, Zerg wants to fight in the middle of the map, 
where they can get the most amount of surface area around the opponent's army. By setting up a surround, Zerg can maximize the DPS of their units and close in on the opponent's forces. Which also brings me on to my furthermore point about the good old Zerg, their abilities, which are unique to only them. These being the first Burrow, an upgraded ability which allows Zerg units to enter the ground and be invisible if the opponent does not have detection. When this is used effectively, Bane needs to be burrowed underneath Marines and Marauders, giving them the good old explosion that they don't really like. Or when also upgraded the Roach Burrow movement, Roaches can go underground and sneak up behind mineral lines, destroying them without the opponent even realizing. Next is the speed upgrades, literally making these units even faster. So if you want to play Zerg, you need to take this into account because you need to play fast. When you can get a good surround using the speed upgrades you have researched, you can maximize how you engage, where you engage, and when you want to take engagements. And this is what you need to consider when you decide to play Zerg. Lastly, we have the Protoss, also known as the Death Ball Race, or the Attack Move Race. The powerful and sturdy Protoss is the race from the future. Having high-tech abilities such as Warp In, Pylon Fields, and Psionic Shields, the Protoss come with their own set of challenges to overcome. Firstly, let's talk about the Protoss Tech Cards, where you have three choices to make, Templar, Robo, or Stargate. These three paths all have their own strengths and weaknesses, making the decision to commit to any one extremely important. Your Templar revolve around playstyles which incorporate the Invisible Dark Templar, the Storming High Templar, Sentry Shields, and Tanking Archons. This unit composition is usually accompanied with the use of a Robo just to bolster the power of the army at hand. Next we have the Robotech which revolves around hard hitting units such as the Immortal, Disruptor or Colossus. These often being paired with Blink Stalkers and Sentries for their Guardian Shields to increase DPS, however lower the incoming damage. And lastly the tech choice which the Protoss have their specialty in the Stargate, allowing them to warp in Void Rays, Tempest, and the ever so powerful Carrier. As you can tell, the Protoss are the owner of their skies, and if left alone to make this Sky Toss army, will roll over anything the opposition can throw at them. The trade off for these super powerful units is the fact that they are expensive slow and take time to build up a decent number of them. If the Protoss player is to lose their expensive army, they will most likely go to lose the game as they need those units to combat what is being thrown at them, making when and where the Protoss engages a fight detrimental for success. The late game is always where the Protoss aims to take a match, allowing them to bring in the power of air superiority. The last defining factors of the Protoss is their ability to warp in units instantly. Warp gates are buildings which enter a cooldown every time they are used. However, when many are in action simultaneously, the Protoss can instantly summon in units at the drop of a hat, making reinforcements fast within the radius of a pylon field. Last but not least is the Chrono Boost. This ability is used off the Nexus, allowing the structure which it is placed on to complete a task at hand at an increased time. This forces the player to make a decision on where they will be spending their Chrono Boost in order to pump out what tech, what unit, or what they need to get out as fast as they can. Last but not least is the fact that Protoss have shields on their units and buildings, where Zerg have a simple life bar that regenerates or Terran just has a life bar which depletes. Before the Protoss unit is damaged, they have a shield attached to the unit, where you can begin to micro those units back and forth, meaning you don't need to take damage on the unit itself, allowing the regenerating shield to come into play. And this is what you need to take into consideration when deciding to play Protoss. So there we have it. Here is a basic talk on what is unique about all three races inside StarCraft 2. I truly hope anyone watching this video can take something from it and I've at least helped a little bit in your decision of picking a race. Hope to see you online and I'll be definitely seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.